Hello, I'm Mary V. Today, let's talk about all the ways that we can make different sounds on the violin. So, obviously, there's more to bowing than just playing loud and soft. So it's worth exploring the different ways that we use the bow and the bow arm to make uh, different sounds and different colours, different dynamics. So the first thing to think about is the contact point. And that's where we play all the way from the fingerboard to the bridge. We've got quite a big choice. And um, one of the reasons we have a look at that is to see whether we can make um, a lovely sound, where our sweet spots are. Because if we play very loudly and we have a contact point that's very close to the fingerboard, those two things don't mix very well. Um, it's a little bit like the louder you play, the closer to the, the bridge you get. But if you actually play on top of the bridge, it's called Ponticello, and it sounds like this. And that's playing right on top of the bridge. So often when you're in orchestra, you're often called upon to do Ponticello and Tremolo at the same time, like this. It's quite a spooky little sound. So that's Ponticello, but let's go back to ordinary playing. Um, if you're playing something uh, quite loud, um, then you'd want to be not too close to the fingerboard, but also you've got to think about how nice the sound is. You'd play that pretty close to the bridge, but if the character was more um, beautiful, something like Debussy, You know, it's more or less in the middle. So it really depends on what kind of character uh, you want to play. And an even bigger difference is arm weight, what you're doing with the arm, and especially with the first finger. The first finger is the thing that you use to create, um, to deliver the arm weight and the more um, heavy heaviness um, mixed with speed. So, for example, if I use um, a lot of arm weight and first finger pressure, but I don't increase the speed, I'll get something like this. So I've got to increase the speed in order to make a beautiful sound. I'm not particularly near the bridge. The biggest difference to sound that is made is with arm weight and first finger pressure. And what you've got to do is decide for yourself what sounds uh, absolutely in character, what you're trying to convey. Um, there's different ways to play the same, um, the same notes, like the beginning of Reverie by uh, Debussy. Now that's done uh, a lot closer to the fingerboard um, because I want to convey a more um, airy sound and a more solid sound uh, with the same music would sound like this. Now the sound is a lot brighter because I'm not quite as far down towards the fingerboard um, and also I'm just not making as much colour but that's what violin playing is actually all about is creating character all the time, creating colour um, and keep trying to improve that all the time. You can hear more and more and the more 
um, experience you have with playing, the more um, it's an act of imagination um, that delivers different uh, characters to uh, your bowing. For example, if you try to play a D major scale um, quite bright, quite loud and quite near the, the bridge, see if you can do the whole thing making a nice sound. Okay, so the next thing is play it quietly and with a lot more air. I mean, there are some technical things you need to know. For example, how to press down um, with the first finger. And one way to do it is simply to stand in front of a mirror and do that. Okay? And that teaches you how to press just with the first finger. And if you like, you can put your first finger out straight. A lot of players do that. That's fine. So you need a bit of imagination to say, you know, is this actually what I want? Or... Sweeter, or even... Sad, or absolutely joyful. You can, there's so many choices that you can actually make. You can decide uh, about the contact point here, which makes quite a difference. You can make a really big difference with the arm weight and the first finger. And then don't forget bow speed. Um, if, you're, if you don't have the right bow speed, then, um, for example, when you play near the fingerboard and you play the Debussy, It just sounds um, timid. There's no tone coming out. I mean, one aspect of sound is that you're delivering the violin sound, uh, all the different types of violin sounds across. So you can play very, very quietly, but you're still um, able to put it across. So how to make even something very, very quiet come alive is a little bit of bow speed. Okay, but just quiet and over the fingerboard like this. But I think the biggest thing in creating character and colours and, and different sounds on the violin is really the imagination, which I think you'll agree is limitless. So um, I hope you enjoy your practice and I hope this has helped. So I'll say bye-bye for now. Bye.